People, my people, now, this video is, well, the general thing is being uh, done shortly after the uh, extravaganza of Junie Palooza, and tonight I begin the first of, I think, 17 or 18 great Australians, um, all but one of which, and it's um, this one, I actually picked up at Junie Palooza, where... If you haven't been to Junipalooza, and I hadn't, you got to get yourself there. It, if you're into gin, um, you know, be there or be square. Uh, there was a couple of thousand people there. Um, it's that big that I was there literally all day, and I kid you not, I just could not make it to everybody, and certainly my budget did not stretch to buying as much gin as I wanted to because I literally wanted to hit every last gin distiller. In fact, next year I might do that. There's a gin festival coming up in March, about a week or two after. Um, surprise, surprise. These guys run out, the, the 17 gins or 18 gins I'm going to review. Um, I might go and hit that and there's still about 56 distillers. So I might go there, do the, just trash the budget, and buy a year's worth of um, gin. Mind you, a couple of weeks after that, there's um, Australian distillers thing and that's got a whole lot of whiskey. So you can just see my budget before March and April is just going to go. <laughs> That's it, we're done. So tonight I am channeling Blue Tongue Gin. So this one, if you paid attention, and please do go and pay attention, watch the 15 second one minute, uh, it's a screwed up. So there is no sound of happiness, but we all pretend it's, there it is, sound of happiness. Smell of happiness says that it's, it's dry. The taste of happiness absolutely confirms that we are dealing with a dry gin. Now, blue gins are not exactly unique on the market. Um, True Blue from Mount Tambourine does it. Um, they're all straight blues. From He's Looking at You Kid, there's another one, I think Ink, which I haven't gotten around to. <laughs> Forgive me, but the people at Ink, I think that also does a color change as well. So, glass, ice cube. Empty this sucker out, and we can already see that the basic chemistry is they take a pea flower dye and the pea flower reacts to the acidity. So that's the reason why it stayed basically blue here. And it basically doesn't do it when I add in my tonic water, which this is not what I thought it would be. I've just been out to the kitchen to grab the ice cubes and completely forgot about tonic water. So this is Fever Tree Indian, premium Indian, um, and Fever Tree was certainly at Juniper Palooza and I didn't get to them either. I know. So that's, yeah. you can see that with the Cut one to one. It's got a very, very pleasant um, color of lilac. So it's basically done so far what we expect it to do. Um, we already know from the smell and the taste that it's a dry gin. Um, it, it's got the pea flower in it. it says so on the on the bottle. Um, I'll put my professors on and see what else they've hidden in the message on the back of the bottle. And it's juniper, citrus, um, and certainly this one will bring it out. Mountain pepper berries, lemon, and anise, myrtle, and a hint of river mint. Brought to life by butterfly pea. Um, as someone who's actually got some horticultural background, um, all members of Faber C, which is the pea family, so uh, everything from your chickpeas through to your broad beans to um, your red kidney beans, the whole lot, um, even your broom and your that you have in your gardens and the gorse, that's a weed in Melbourne, are all members of the pea family and they all have identical flowers. They're all butterfly shaped, they've all got those little cute little wings on them. So you've got the 
a little bit and um, those wings. So the pedanti came out and just said, oh, look, just this, this is really quite, oh. And we'll ignore the pedantic for the moment. So it's got the pea flower in it. Let's see how she tastes. You know, with um, Fever Tree Indian, um, and this is now perfectly empty bottle, this is actually better than I thought it might be. Okay, so, okay. <coughs> the colour changing gins are a party trick that have been done a couple of times now. Um, and for me, because I've got a science teacher for a wife, and I know that it all comes down to um, acidity and pH levels or lack thereof. Um, that's behind the colour changing. It's not as impressive a party trick as it might be for, well, I know, lovely Sally and Blake who gave me the True Blue Gin were quite fully impressed that they came across a colour changing gin, and I went, yeah, okay, been there, reviewed one, um, <laughs> much to their horror. And Blake, I'm referring to, is indeed my special guest presenter, Blake. Um, he who drinks the uh, flannel-based gins that I can't. Um, so for me, it's, it's the colour changing itself is not a terribly big, you know, cheap whiz factor. The gin itself, though, is rather well constructed. Um, because you've because your fever tree, I'm tasting the citrus. I'm not tasting a lot of mountain pepper because we know from um, Organic Bay's um, Navy Strength, which well and truly um, has a good amount of mountain pepper in it, um, pepper berries have got to burn. And I'm not picking that burn up here in, in this gin. It's, they're in there. They're hiding. Um... The citrus is obviously there, and a hint of river mint. Now, Australian mints, unlike the juice variety, are rather subtle creatures. So, I, if I was a if I was a herb, I wouldn't be a um, Australian river mint. <laughs> um, gee, what's a really loud um, plant that tells really poor taste jokes? And um, yeah, but the botanists have certainly got a job. Um, because if I was a plant, um, go. No, I'm getting the citrus. Um, I, for my part, I'm not picking up the pepper berries. I'm not picking up the mint. Um, having said that, it's a very workable gin. And certainly Snowgum, who distilled this, were at Junior Palooza, and yet again, someone else I didn't get around to. Um, God, uh, you know, I hope Junior Palooza is held next year, because there's going to be a whole lot of people that I've got to get back to, uh, and actually meet too. Um, yeah, it, it works. Look, they do, it's a really good gin, it's a workable gin. Um, when we finally get rid of this damn La Nina spring, which... Um, is it's really bad for gin drinking to have a quiet whinge. Um, gin's a summer drink. It's long, hot summer days. And at the moment in Melbourne, um, we're just not getting them. Having said that, if you live in a part of Australia that's getting these long, hot summer days, um, get yourself a bottle of a big bottle of this, and it will be a great way to pass an afternoon <laughs> or, or, or six. Okay? Um... Food pairing, yeah, nah, the, I, I can't really think of a food that this would go through with. Um, let me see that. Look, I'd actually munch on macadamia nuts, just some roasted, um, mildly salted macadamias would go, I think, really well with this, uh, because I think the salt would balance the citrus. Um, and then you've got the whole crunch factor of, of the macadamia because macadamia is 
for those of you who haven't found them yet are marble sized if they're good size so just yeah munching on them um whilst just sitting back and just chilling um that's what that's what i do with this gin i, I can't think of a particular food that would go with it um i mean there are some gins out there that do really go well with food and this one like a lot of them simply isn't um it's so it's that sun out there with the macadamia nuts just <laughs> crunching away um it also ideally makes a end of the day gin. You know, um, you know, you you know the story. You, you're all old enough to drink. You're all having careers and kids and all that stuff. Um, and you pour good measure that uh, pour up the ice block, whack it in, pour good measure of this, and pour a um, good measure of tonic out, and you invoke the um, great goddess. Ah, uh, yeah, because. Red, white, and kitties occasionally wander past. Not the polite business, I'm not, but I'm not, but kitties do wander past. Um, and I really don't want my children chanting that word because it gets phone called out of school. Um, so, that, yeah, it's that sort of gin. So, thank you very much for watching. Um, this is the first of 17 gins that I wrote up. Um, so, stay tuned. Subscribe is the best way to get these because if you subscribe, Every time I do one, it just dings and says the uh, world's leading new, new, neurodiverse reviewer of, of others and gins has done another magnificent job of um, reviewing and you can get in on the know because, see, the people who don't follow or um, subscribe to me, they get it secondhand. So you can be the one who goes, oh, well, yes, I got this particularly good gin this week because I watched Odin from Gin and Tonic, or Gin and Tonic for You, review this gin, and he rather recommended it. And you can just impress the shit out of your friends and family, and do what I patient occasionally appear to be, and that's rather well informed. So that's the reason why I subscribe if I was you. And I've subscribed to my own channel, so why shouldn't you? So I'll catch you next week. Um, which gin am I going to go for next week? I am very tempted to go and make the duck very angry so this is gin number one gin number two so you got a blue tongue and an angry duck what could possibly go wrong let's not have a quarrel in front of the screen people so thanks for watching subscribe like share and i'll see you next week with an angry duck be afraid people be so afraid you subscribe and follow Later. Bye.